Hello and welcome to part 11 where we are configuring Windows Server 2019 cluster for multi subnet always on cluster series we are creating with using Windows Server 2019 and Super Server 2019 on a test lab created on Hyper V VM which is running on your lap. Let's get going. As you know, so far we have created a Hyper V test lab. We, in the first session, I talk about the overall concept, what we are trying to do. Idea is to create start to end on a simple laptop with 128 GB of space, create a complete always on setup and creating multiple VMs, configuring the network, configuring domain controller, installing SQL Server, Windows installation, setting up cluster, and finally always on. So far, we have covered installing SQL Server in the last series, and today, I will install a Windows cluster. My name is Prakash Hira. I'm a MCDB, MCRTP. I work as a senior manager, IT and assistance technologies, and I also run a SQL Server consultancy for, for performance tuning and high availability. Uh, here is my blog. You can check this particular series as well as all the video related to it on here or on YouTube. Plus, connect me on LinkedIn as well as on the Twitter for any questions we have on these videos. Let's get on to our demo. So to do this demo, we'll just start a partial IC session. The idea is to connect to DB1 and run the commands to create the cluster. So click OK. Go to part 11, Windows cluster, select it. First command as usual will be connecting to DB1. Um, it doesn't matter like if I want, I can connect to db two or three, and the same thing will work. But all right, so connected db one. So first, let's talk about what I'm doing. Our cluster name should be WCW19 DB in this case, and we have these three nodes which should be part of the cluster, so which we'll be using it. And then cluster nodes split by one. We are providing the cluster name here, cluster nodes here, and then a static address. 10, 10, 10, 21, and 2020, 2021. 20, so for the cluster, why we have two networks? Because these are multiple subnets. So we want to provide one IP in every subnet. So whenever a cluster moves to another data center, it still owns the IP there. So we created this machine. If you look at the IP config, you can see our machines we created with 11, 12, 13. In this case, 21 is for the cluster IP. So if you just put them in the memory, populate the variables, run the new cluster command, and this will get going. So there is a problem. The cluster node as such with a string was not acceptable. So I created a cluster node array and we should be using this to create it. And as you can see, uh, within a few seconds, we can see the new cluster command and it's just start configuring the cluster right now. It's forming the cluster. Once it's done, we'll validate it. Idea is to check if cluster is working and then in the last step, we're gonna validate by doing a failover across all the three nodes and see that every node can take over the cluster ownership. This is typically done by the server team members, but it's pretty easy stuff, and nowadays I expect my DB team to take care of this simple step. I'll go ahead and configure the first step. We'll find out which is the cluster node, so let's run it. And we can see we just created the cluster. Owner node is right now DB3, status is online, cluster is running great. Can also do this, we can connect to the app node or the db node anywhere but app node we already have it so app node is where we'll be doing all our multi subnet testing we are treating app node as a node which is running the application so if they're from there can connect to proper listener that would be a good multi subnet test so we are on the app node to start failover cluster just search fail that should show up. We have a cluster manager. Click connect to cluster. Type CW19 DB. That was our cluster name. And we can see cluster is connected. Roles are empty right now. 
once we're going to do the listener, you'll find the listener availability group role would be here, which will have a listener connect to it. For now, let's take a look at the nodes. All the three nodes are there. And if I go to the listener, you can see the DB3 is the owner. There is one warning coming here. This warning is pretty much normal because we are configuring a different subnet. It says that no network matching interface for this one. It says if a cluster node span different multiple subnet, then this may be normal. So this is an expected error. This you can ignore if you're running multiple subnet. If you're creating a same subnet always on setup, in that case, you will not have this problem. If you go to the network, you the same with cluster 2 is running on LAN 10. And you can see both the nodes are here. If we go to one, you can see on the 20 network, we have DB3 connected. And now storage wise, this uh, cluster does not need any kind of storage because always on take care of synchronization itself. So storage will be there. And that's what makes this Windows cluster super simple to configure. As you can see, a single command basically did it. So this is our cluster demo. So once we do it, so let's get back to our main screen a Windows 10 demo machine and open the script again here we can see the db3 is not let's check the cluster node name you can see these are the three nodes here as you can see our focus is to do the automation so that we can run these things with reliable steps now let's run the steps again and check that so at this point we want to see if primary owner is correct if we want to set it right so we want to store this data the last command into cluster group details because we'll be running next command based on this after a while in a while we want to run this because we'll be running the command next on this variable now the next task is to make sure that we're configuring which is the owner node right now Right. So let's see when I run it, you can see that it's not able to figure out which is the proper owner node. So we want to assign it. We want to say that first node of our cluster is TV1 is the primary node. And that's what we want to set as owner node. Once you run this and I run the same command again, you can see now DB1 is the node. Okay. So by default, that's where the priority should go. We want to configure quorum, but this is three node clusters. So one of the options is to use file share as a core quorum. But in this case, it's not that three node makes it its own quorum, majority quorum. And that's what we are seeing here on this command that takes you. Now, as a next step, we want to go through all the cluster nodes and make sure change it. So if I run this command, you can see these three nodes. What we want is that these three nodes, we want cluster to connect and try to fail over itself. Okay, so the idea is that it makes every cluster node as primary and see that it's able to do it. So when I run it, this particular code, it's gonna say it's current owner DB3, it's gonna set to DB1, it's waiting for 10 seconds. And now next line will tell us that it's completed and DB1 is the current node and that's the expected result here. And you can see current owner is db1. Now it's changing it to db2. Same step, move is completed. And now you can say updated current owner is db2. And now it's setting it back to owner node to db3. And it will check again that that's possible. So the idea is once these commands are completed, we know that this cluster is configured properly and every node can become the owner node if required. All right, so with that, we are done. This is where our cluster configuration completed. Windows cluster is already at this point. It should be accessible. And as we can see that from app server, you can access this cluster and you can see all the nodes and validate all the settings. Now in the next exercise, we'll talk about how to enable always on related configuration on SQL server. And then we'll do the always on configuration. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. If you find video was useful for you, please click the like button. I produce SQL Server related video, typically try to do one video a week. So if you are interested in knowing what coming next, please subscribe and click on the notification bell. If you have any questions, please note it down in the comment section or any requests for the future videos. Look forward to hear from you. Thank you.